Okay, so this butt converter takes power from the battery through these blue wires here, which come from the Sabaton, and then spits out 12 volts out here, which can be adjusted um, out of these two wires, uh, which can then go to connect to the lighting and all that stuff. It's already getting a bit messy in here, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a look at the tail light. Right, me from the future here, I'm actually gonna have to move this box because I was trying to take out one of the packs to do some maintenance on it, and this actually gets in the way. You can't bring the pack up to take it out. So I'm either gonna have to think of a way of like detaching it, such as like Velcro, or moving it. I no idea where, but I'm gonna have to rethink that. So today I have the rear brake light assembly and number plate holder and all that. It's got a cool kind of smoked effect. Uh, I've got three wires, uh, one's for the dim running light and one's uh, brighter for the actual brake light. Uh, then also the indicators which are off my old bike. Um, I've got a L bracket there to attach them. Um, some extenders. Um, I'm going to be getting new indicators though to uh, match the smoked um, plastic. And also because the thread's like a really weird size, it doesn't match up with these extenders. So that's going to attach something like that. Can fine tune the angle and exactly where. Uh, I've made up this plate here which has got holes for the wires and then can bend up the end um, and then bolt it on each side. Job's a good one. Now by the magic of editing, it's all just gonna happen. go backlight and indicators all fitted and that's on there pretty secure I could tighten these down a bit more but yeah so now it's on to I guess the front right so the, for the front I've been gathering these bits now this is the light although I'm actually gonna have to send it back because the doesn't have the e marking on it the seller said it did but it doesn't so I've got a refund for that and this is a bit of a gamble that basically I bought a second really cheap headlight, I think this was about 12 quid for this and some other stuff which I'll show you. And the idea is just to use the housing from it, because it's got the mounts you can see here to attach it to the uh, uh, frame and everything. So yeah, we'll see if this works out, I haven't actually tried that one in it. Um, and it also came with a bag of mounting hardware to clamp round here. Apologies if the video looks a bit dodgy from here on basically my camera is playing up the screen on the backs not working So I can't actually see what I'm filming. So yeah, here goes right. So this is what the low beam looks like So if I shine it at the camera, you can see you got these two side ones little bottom one And that produces a decent beam pattern. That's pretty pretty bright in real life now the high beam gives a different beam pattern It's more centralized and also it turns on that middle um, light and also the side ones. So although that exact light doesn't fit my requirements because it doesn't have that e-mark which I checked with Andy Kirby and he said they do check that in the test so that is important to have that. Also it means that they don't check things like the colour and the like the angle for all the mirrors for the high beam stuff they assume it's good if it's an e-mark even if it's like a random stamp on it that the manufacturer puts on it they still count it as an e-mark if you know what I mean. And just for the comparison this one actually uses like a filament bulb it's hilarious, it's so inefficient and not even that bright. And the high and low beam is just different brightnesses, so this is definitely going in the bin when I get the light out of this. And you probably also notice I've put some mirrors on it. Um, these are pretty massive, but they're motorcycle mirrors. And these are E-marked, just down there, I don't know if you can see that, um, but they are. Um, I got these clamps which are pretty low profile, I'll put a link in the description as always. Um, it's going to be a bit of a fine balance getting these in the right place because I need to put some like rubber washers down here to keep them in the right place. Same on that side. Also got some switch gear, so you've got your start stop which I'll use instead of this button down here to turn the BMS on and off. Um, kill switch obviously. Um, these will be for the power modes. I was going to do this for forward and reverse but I'll have a think what I put that one down as. Um, then this side obviously you've got your horn, indicators. Um, lights off, 
low beam, high beam. And then I'll probably put another switch over here somewhere to turn the side lights on and off. Because um, I'm not sure if you're meant to have them. I'm not sure if you're meant to have side lights for the MSVA. Um, and if you do have them, whether you're meant to turn them on and off. So by that I mean the little halo ring around the light, which we'll see in a minute. Um, and also the um, low colour on here, the dimmer red light. Oh yeah, and I got some nice smoked indicators to match this. And that's what I was talking about, the halo light round. Just a nice white glow, makes it more visible during the day. It looks pretty cool. Now as to taking this apart, there's a screw here and a screw here. So I'm just going to take those out and uh, see what that does. Right, and then there are some clips all the way around holding it in. Now the hope is that this middle bit, can I, I can take it out and put the LED one in. That's the plan. Right, now that's all being removed. Let's see if this is going to fit. Ah. Oh. Um... <laughs> Right, those those are, those are quite different sizes. Um, there is no way that is fitting in that, unfortunately. So you can actually buy like specialised housings for these lights, but they're like twenty five pound, which is virtually as much as the headlight itself. I think Tony, you went through about four hundred of these different enclosures trying to find the right one. So um. Oh well, plan B I guess. Right, finally managed to get a new headlight. What's different about this one is it's got the dot .SAE marking. I don't know if you can see that, I'll put a picture up. If not, just there. And that means that this will comply with the MSBA and they'll be all happy. And I've also got this new housing here, um, which is metal um, and it looks quite nice. It's pretty expensive, I think it was actually more than the headlight, which is just ridiculous, but hey. And then to secure it in place, it goes in like so, pokes it like that. Then you have these little clips, which I'll show you how these go on. So basically first you need to line the headlight up. So this down here is the bottom of the headlight where these two brackets are. And the main beam, which is this big one, goes down there. So... Let's do it by eye really, but that's fine. And then these little clips are what hold it in place. And these are a pain to get on, I'll be honest. But basically what I've done, I've got them in a vise and I've pushed the pins out, which makes them easier to get in. Because underneath here, there's a little um, like ledge that the pin can stick under like that. And then this bit rests on the lamp itself. So we need to get one under. And this is the tricky bit, getting the other bit under the ledge. So there we go, that's that one on. So then just bring it back up, make sure it's all lined up, which it pretty much is. And then I would recommend doing one just next to it. So again, put one bit under. There we go, and then once you've got two in it, it starts to get quite a bit easier and make sure it's all still lined up. That has actually rotated a bit. And then we can get the housing and feed the wires out the back. And there's actually a little lip around the back which hooks under the same ridge that the clips go under. So you have to get that on first, line up the holes at the front. And then you have these screws here which are designed to go in there. Obviously it doesn't have to be super tight. Now because of how wide this is, I'm going to have to angle these in a bit because else they'll be pointing outwards and then it won't all sit flush. So I'm just going to use a bit of cardboard just so I don't dent it. So there we go, that's all fitted on. I've put the indicators on the front and the back as well just to get a complete look. But yeah, that looks really swish. Um, I'm not quite sure how the beam works, whether it fires it kind of straight out or whether it's angled it down. Um, I've put the headlight is angled far down as I can at the moment because um, I don't know if you can make out but it's just hitting on the end of the indicator stalks but I can cut those down if need be. So yeah, that's the lighting all fitted on. It's now just a case of wiring it all up because as you can see at the moment got all these wires loose 
tidying up in here. And um, yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. Ought to get some hub sinks on the back if I can and some ferrofluid. I discussed that in my last video. A few little jobs, um, such as like getting the horn on. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty much there, as I say, just the wiring. <laughs> 